Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Say, I feel like building a model kit today. How about you? Well, hopefully you can join us for this building of the 1964 Mercury Comet Caliente by AMT Ertl. Now, one thing I want to do with this model is I want to build it for my upcoming Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Museum. And one thing I want to do for that is I want to try to see if I can add in one of those Fujimi driving figures. And so wish me luck. I'm going to be trying that in this video. Another thing that I heard is that AMT under round two is re-releasing this kit as it originally was as one of the Craftsman series kits. So that should be really, really cool. And I actually have a copy of the brand new box that's coming out for that. So if you can stick to the end of the video, I will show that to you. And I'm sure you're going to love it. So what else can I say? But without further ado, let's go down to the bench and check out my build of the 1964 Mercury Comet Caliente by AMT Ertl. Oh yes, and if you want to see me unbox this video, check out that link above as it scrolls across. So let's go down to the bench. The first assembly step we have is our interior, and you can see it's fairly easy. First we have our instrument panel, which we drop into here, and then we put our steering wheel in, and our shift lever will drop into the little hole down here. Now, I don't have the shift lever sticking here, but these are the interior parts, and here you can see just how cool that dashboard looks. It's got all the correct gauges and the radio and everything else in there. There's even wood grain just underneath all the buttons. Now, the steering wheel, again, is also really nicely done on here, for as simple as this is. The uh, one thing it doesn't have is the turn signal lever on the side, if there is one in this kit. I'm not sure. On the real car, I mean. And then the interior has a really nice uh, upholstery pattern in there, as well as the door panels off the side. Now, I'm not too sure how the figure is going to fit in here, but I did notice that there are a few mold marks in the carpet in the four corners, so we will easily get rid of those, as well as this clip sticking off the front, and scrape down our sides and everything, make sure it's all nice and clean. Now I want to paint the interior like this photo here. What's wonderful about the Craftsman series model kits is they were designed for the younger builder. They're actually old AMT promotional models which you'd get at the dealership. So again, really easy and quick to build. I might possibly get this thing done in a week, which is amazing for my channel because I never get anything done, as you know. <laughs> okay, so I've assembled the tools of minor destruction. We have two different files here. We've got two different knife blades, a number 11 hobby blade and number 16. I've also got this sanding block with some 320 sandpaper for roughing out and our Zona clippers. So let's just roll this stuff out of the way. First, we're going to take our clippers and we're just going to clip this right off because I hate it. <laughs> All right. So now that that's done, you can see how easy this interior will be to clean up. First, we'll just uh, feel around for some seam marks, make sure, or mold lines, make sure there's none on the seats, which there are not. So then I'll just take my sanding block. I've got to go in at a bit of angle. If you want to see what tools I'm using, just click up here, and uh, there'll be a link coming across to my toolbox video. It shows you what you need. Okay, so there's some seam lines here. You can feel it. So we'll just go like this just to get that down and again like that to get that down so now it's feeling a bit smoother you can also take your number 11 hobby blade and you could go in here and scrape it remember you want to round this a bit so you're starting there one two tilt up like that and then like that, just until the seam line starts to go away. Still, you can always clean this up with a bit of sandpaper. And there you go. So I'll carry on on this, just chuck it to the side for now. And then again, doing the same thing down here. 
and down here the bottom of that dashboard and now actually we could I don't know if I should do this because it'll click in but you could technically test fit that dashboard make sure that's all going in there nice and even Okay, I'm not going to go down further because these little tabs will lock into the little holes, so that's not good. So I'll just clean up the rest of these parts using my hobby files and whatever, and we'll take a look at the next step. Here we are with the next step, and what it is is to get rid of these mold marks off the carpet. So there's our number 16 hobby blade, and you can see by the design of this blade that it actually fits flat with that floor as you're scraping unlike the uh, number 11 hobby blade where you're just hitting it with the tip of the point. So that's why I always recommend using the number 16 in here. Okay, so what I'm doing is making a dreadful noise for you all. <laughs> that's just going across like this with the blade. Then I'm going to switch directions. Actually, am I going to switch directions? Nope, can't switch directions. So that's basically it. And I'll take care of the other four so you don't have to hear any more. Now, I've cleaned up the dashboard, and I also noticed that there are some scratches in the top. So I can uh, fix those up with some nice fine-grade sandpaper. This is probably around a 600 or an 800 even. And uh, just by sanding this, it should remove them off the surface. But that's not what I want to show you. It is, but it isn't. So here's the hole down here for our steering column to go through. And you'll notice that it just doesn't want to go through. So there's actually three ways we could fix that. One is with our number 11, or yeah, number 16 hobby blade. No, number 11. <laughs> and that's just to spin this around in here until this hole opens up. The second way is to use a drill of comparable size. But the third way is to use this reaming tool that my dad made. I was calling this a hole enlarging tool, but then I, I found the correct term. So I just put it in there and give it a twirl. I can also go this way, which might be better. Okay. Ream the hole out, and now it actually works. So I will be able to uh, use some glue in here to adjust this in the right position and then lock it in later on. On our steering wheel you'll notice that there is a burr right here. That's where it was attached to the parts tree. And there's a really cool way that you can get this off without flattening that one side with your file by doing this or rolling it or whatever. So I'll just show you what that technique is and uh, I think you're going to find it quite amazing. Nobody else does this but me. Now here's the technique for getting rid of that burr on your steering wheel. I've attached our steering wheel column into this Black & Decker drill and I've got my sandpaper here. This is the 320. So what I can do is just go like this. And now that burr is going to be gone and our steering wheel is actually going to be perfectly round around that ring. Now, before you begin painting your model, you want to clean up any of the dirt and grease from your fingers, as well as mold release agent. So always clean this area with mild soapy water and have fun doing that. It's uh, great to play in the sink every now and again. But see, you'll notice a bit of uh, grime right there. I can just wipe that with my finger so I know it's not molded into the plastic. Now I've had this box of Fujimi figures for a very long, long time in my life. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can fit this driver into our Mercury. And hopefully it'll work. But if it doesn't, well, I'll leave them out. Here's the parts tree for building our driver from the Fujimi kit. It does say that he is 124 scale and our Mercury is 125th. So I'll do my best to try to get this guy in here. But what we have is the torso, the two arms, the legs and a series of different heads. Now, these ones with the goggles and that, they're meant for race drivers, but there are heads that are just regular civilians, so we'll use one of those. Now, what I'll do is clip out the legs first, because this is what's really going to tell if this will work or not. If it doesn't, there's no point in carrying on. Or we might have to make some adaptations to our, our Mercury kit. So here's the legs cut out. And here we've got the interior. So yeah, as you can see, he's not going to go down. 
into that seat because, <laughs> well, his legs are getting in the way of the floorboards. So there is sort of a thing that I could do here, although I'm not sure if it's the right answer. One of the things to do is try to heat him up and like bend these legs up a bit. Uh, the other way, now it's unfortunate that I can't move the seat backward a bit because that would solve a lot of problems or maybe make some new ones. <laughs> there you go. Um, the other way I'm thinking is to actually cut a hole into the floorboards here and just slide his feet through the hole. But I'm not sure if you'll, you're going to see that when you turn the car upside down. So we'll just do a little quick body check. Oof! Body check! Here we have our Mercury from underneath. And you can see that this entire chassis piece will fit into that body without exposing any little details like the interior. Now, if I can get this out, there we go. So you can see that if I did drill a hole right about there, I believe it is, and have this guy's feet sticking through the hole, I don't think that you would actually see that in this. It, it might look a little bit weird if you're actually looking for his legs when you're looking through the window of the car. But, uh, you know, from a perspective of him sitting in the car and whatnot, I, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Now take a look at this. With a little bit of uh, mucking around, I got the guy from the 32 Chrysler to fit in here. Actually, not really much mucking around. He just kind of dropped in place. The only thing that's sort of... There we go. <laughs> the only thing that's sort of odd with this guy, though, is that uh, he's designed to sit in a taller, higher seat. So you'll notice he's got his legs, kind of his knees up and wrapped around that steering wheel. So really, I need more of that that gentle angle like the other figure has here. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> and that's kind of fun. Okay, everyone, sorry to disappoint you, but I don't think a figure is actually going to fit in here. This is a spare set of legs from that 1932 Chrysler driver. And what I've noticed here is that his bottom of his pant leg is actually just like a millimeter above hitting this uh, gas pedal and the other one is just a millimeter or two from hitting the floor and if I do put the feet on him, his shoes, that's gonna really interfere in there. I suppose I could cut the pant leg up a bit and then try to stuff the shoes under there but the second problem is the way his body is shaped. He's tilting forward like that and uh, when he's tilting forward like this, it, he's really hunched forward into the car. I don't think anyone would really drive like that. They would be, you know, in a more relaxed position with their body back in the seat, you know, like that, as opposed to trying to hunch over. The other guy from Fujimi is so long in his legs here. I've tried to put him in a couple of other cars, but... You know, he's... I don't know what he's designed for. Uh, some Japanese vehicle or something, maybe. But that leg position puts him, like, almost into the rear seat. And if I were to straighten the legs out by bending them, that would push them, like, right out to where my finger is, underneath that, uh, that panel. Cutting the holes in, like I thought, would actually have his legs almost sticking out like this underneath there so you know he's not Fred Flintstone so I, let's just forget the figure and move on. Now here's our interior prior to painting and you can see I've got everything fitting in there nice and perfect so we'll just clean this thing up and I'll paint it. Now I'm not going to spend time in this video spray painting because I know there's a, a few people out there that actually do that in their videos but I think the uh, time in this video would be better served for me showing you tips and techniques in order to get this together. If you want to know how to paint, I do have a kind of video showing how it's done coming across here. That's the one about reading the instructions and everything. So it's in there. But for now, I'll just paint this thing and then you can see what it looks like. Now the third assembly step on our instruction sheet is actually the undercarriage with the wheels going in place. Now, I'm not showing the second one just yet, second assembly phase, because that's what it is. That's the interior 
the glass and the body shell being all compressed. But we still have to clean up our body and paint that. And uh, at this stage, I haven't painted the interior yet. I'm just showing you what's going on next. Because I want to take out a bunch of things and paint them all at the same time while the weather is good. So here we have our undercarriage. And we're going to have to remove this using our clippers again. Right there. And then there are so many mold marks underneath here. This is crazy. So there's four here because this used to be a screw together promo kit. Had holes in there and screws underneath. And the screws would have gone into these holes here on these big pegs under the body. But what they've done is they've replaced them with pins, which is a lot easier. You just put some glue on there and you're ready to go. And uh, there is no engine in here to build. But this represents a six cylinder which looks like this in the real world. Okay, and another thing I noticed is the undercarriage on here. I'll provide some pictures in a moment, but it's either done in red primer, which I think is actually from the factory, sprayed red, and the fuel cell is actually stainless steel or steel. Um, and then you've got your exhaust pipes coming in here, and the transmission would be aluminum, that sort of thing. But the whole underpan was painted in red primer, black springs, of course, but red primer. And I've also seen this whole thing painted flat black as if it was uh, sprayed with undercoating all the way from end to end. So here's pictures showing that. Okay, so what I will do now is take my number 16 hobby blade again and scrape out all these mold marks. And there's so many on here. It's unbelievable. Unforgivable. <laughs> anyway, I will scrape all those down, clean this thing up. And again, using our sandpapers and whatnot along the edges, clean all that up. And then I'm going to tape this down onto my trusty cardboard box. And I will spray this either in red primer if I have enough or it's going to be flat black. So I am going to surprise you with that. Here we have the undercarriage for our 64 Mercury, all nicely cleaned up. There are some seam lines here on this subframe that go up to the front. I did remove all the mold marks except for the screw holes that are here and here. They are still sunken in, but on the outskirts and inside all of here, they're gone. The only place I couldn't get was here and here beside the engine because the blade actually didn't fit inside there. So if I bring this up, you can just see how smooth this is and how nice it will be. So either it's going to be painted with the primer red or under undercoating black. So just wait and see. Here we have the chassis of our 1964 Mercury Cougar. And you can see I painted it flat black underneath. It's because the red primer didn't work. I also painted gloss black on the springs, the differential, the drive shaft and the oil pan. I did paint steel on the transmission end and then down here on the tailpipe and on our gas tank. Now the muffler is painted with aluminum as is the bell housing. Now let's bring this up to the camera and I can show you every little detail. So take a look at that. Isn't that looking nice? Look at those uh, subframe rails as well. And then down we go here and we've got our nice fuel cell and our muffler and tailpipe. So again, really fun to paint. A little bit of uh, some professional brush steering around there, but it looks good. Now here's an interior with a little bit of gray primer on it. And what I'm going to do next is paint it with the semi-gloss trim clad rust based paint. And this should be really nice, a semi-gloss black to make it look like that leatherette. Now have a look at that interior. Isn't that great? Now what I did is I put some masking tape up front and on the back here. And the reason why I did that is now we can actually take it off of here. And you see I've masked off the contact points where we're going to be gluing the interior up into our body. So that'll save you a lot of time scraping the paint off of there. Because as we all know, if you try to glue onto paint, you're not going to get anywhere. So now here's our body. And you can see our interior will fit nicely right in there and right on those posts. So if you add a little glue in there, it will stick forever. Now, before we glue our interior components together, we have to do some detail painting. 
what we need to do is paint the wood inside here as well as our chrome inside and we need to scrape the paint out of this little hole here for the gear stick lever to go into and that lever is chrome plated so we need to remove the chrome where it's going to glue for our glue to glue plastic to plastic surface contact so that's very important we would also have to do the same on the sides of our dashboard here and then down in here on these sides so that when we click this together we can add a little bit of glue in there and the dashboard will never fall out. Now what we need is to paint the wood inside our dashboard as well as the chrome up in here. This is Humbrol number no. 9. It's a really nice brown woody kind of color just like the photograph before. And here you can see I've applied two coats of it onto the steering wheel. Seems like you need two coats just to make it look nice and thick. And we'll have to take our chrome in here, paint the little emblem in the center as well as the horn buttons and a few of the other details. Like I was saying along the bottom of the dashboard and that's wood and up top is metal, chrome. And then we've also got wood inside and a little square in here, a rectangle and then along there. And we can also paint our carpet with a flat black, possibly from testers, or maybe even the black from Games Workshop. And we do have our petals here, which you could highlight just to make them stand out. Here's all our components painted, and just prior to me gluing them all together, I wanted to show you how I painted this before everything gets assembled, just so that you can see it open in its element before I actually lock it up. Now one thing I did do is put in the chrome-plated shift lever right here, and I also painted this little square area with aluminum. Uh, I did look up and found the column listed online, so I could actually see what it looked like. So take a look at this. What do you think of that? I got it pretty much just like the illustration. It was so hard to get the uh, chrome on these little tiny bars up here. My hand is shaky. It's not what it used to be and my eyesight is just failing. I have to take my glasses off and I can barely see what I'm doing. I, when I go to uh, dip the brush in paint, it's like, yeah, I can stab super deep into the paint with a brush when I'm not intending to. I'm just intending to get the little bristles because I can't see where the paint bottom ends and the brush hits. Anyway, there's the brake pedal. I did a little chrome rectangle around it. I was going to do the same for the gas pedal, but had too much uh, problems with that. I did not paint the carpet the flat black like I was saying, but it could be done. I just got couldn't get up the nerve to try to get the brush back here is <laughs> what the thing is. But I think it'll look good. And I really like this uh, color in here. It's really like a sports car, sort of 60s sports car look in there. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, you can see I painted the top of little ashtrays and the detail in the back and the little bar here to uh, act as a handle to open up that uh, center console. So taking a look at the dashboard, now I'm a little bit shaky, but I can imagine that... Uh, in the future release of this, AMT is going to include those nice decals that go in here for the instrument cluster. I did dry brush the letters right in there. I'm oh, sorry, the numbers on the speedometer. Now, I don't know how well the camera can pick that up. You can see the wood in there. It is a little bit, you know, along the top with a wobbly hand. But if you turn the angle of this, you know, when it's sitting in the car, you won't really see that I kind of got fat brush up there. And I added a little bit of black wash into the radio face just to make it kind of stand out. And then I was looking at the steering wheel, and if you look at that illustration again, you'll notice there's little chrome bars, two there and two there. Now this is going to be the top of the steering wheel with the wide bit there, and then the bottom has the two brakes. And I also added in a little bit of that Citadel Nuln Oil black wash into the center of the steering wheel, just so you could see a Mr. Clamente. Now what I'll do, here you can see that I've scraped the paint off on the dashboard. Could also do it right there on the little tab ends. Maybe I should. And then underneath, I had a stick holding this on for painting, so I don't have to scrape that little bit out, but I will have to match it on the steering wheel when I glue this in, so that I've got that plastic to plastic contact right there. And you can also see that I scraped the paint right into here as well. So everything will glue up nicely once we get the glue in there. So I'm going to glue it off camera and then show you the finished interior. 
Now I had to make a little alteration in our dashboard because when I glued in the steering column I had painted it brown all the way down to about here and this was white on the end and it didn't look right so I painted that over with gloss black paint from testers and now you can see that the results look a lot better and you can also see through the steering wheel the instruments and everything in the back so I think I've done a really good job and if you're painting this I wish you good luck on your dashboard. And would you look at that! That's our interior all painted and glued together and I hope it looks quite nice to you. I'm actually quite impressed with it. It does look really really good. Now one thing that I did do was I painted gloss black over here where I had scraped off the paint for that plastic to plastic glue bond and you could see white plastic there so I figured I'd paint this black in case when I put it into the body you could accidentally see that. We want this all to look like the interior color and not have something blatant like the white sticking out there in the wrong spot, of course. Now, are you building this along with me and painting it along with me? If so, that's really, really cool, and I'm glad you're actually using this video as a teaching lesson. So if you're doing that, uh, let me know in the comments down below how's it turning out for you. I hope you're getting some good results, too. Again, uh, Thanks for watching this far and uh, letting me know if you think this is a cool interior or not. So I think what we'll do next is let's add some black wash to our chrome plated parts and just make them look not toy like but actually like the real 64 Mercury. Now here's a picture of our 1964 Mercury Comet and you can see just how much black wash will be needed. You have to go all the way around that perimeter and into the grill bars. Looking at the back of the car, you can see that there is also some black wash in between the panel between the two tail lamps. While we're adding black wash and black paint to the car, we might as well do these hubcaps. Now in order to paint this grill, we're going to be using some Nuln Oil. This is a black shade wash from the Games Workshop, and I will be painting it inside here and on the wheels and in the back. And I also have some Testers Gloss Black, which I will paint on the back side of these grills. I'm also going to use my number 16 hobby blade to remove the 1964s that are molded on the front and rear bumpers. And here I've printed off a, an authentic British Columbia license plate. This was actually hung on my dad's garage wall for a long time. And I've actually gone in and uh, made this as a photo reduction of basically this license plate. If you want to check out how to make license plates, check them out up here. Another thing I should do is make sure that these holes are open enough that our metal axle can actually fit inside because sometimes these will be full of shellac and chrome. So what we want to use is our little drill here. This is a 1 16th and just very carefully go into the holes with the drills just to clean them all up. And now you can see that axle fits nice and tightly into our wheel back. So very briefly, this is how that wash actually works. You just take a little bit in your brush and you go along into the grill insert and you can see that it will flow down just like a nice black water. Here's the grill and bumper after adding in that black wash. I also added in two little amber dots in the center of those parking light lenses. That's how it would actually be on the real car. It would just be the bulb that was amber and not the actual lens. And look at that difference that a British Columbia license plate adds in there versus that chrome 1964 dealer type plate. Also the back bumper, I added that plate in there. So you can really see just how great this looks. Here's our completed chassis for our 1964 Mercury Comet Clemente. And what I did was I added on our wheels after giving them a nice black wash. And I painted the backs of the wheels gloss black as well as the axle because you could see the chrome axle peeking up through here. And the other reason is, if you paint them, they will not rust as quickly as if you left them in bare metal. The only reason why they would rust is maybe they get a little bit of wear from spinning. But overall, that's how our wheels went. And the wheels were assembled easily just by pressing the hubcap in through the tire and then the wheel onto the axle. So there's our chassis. So that leaves us with the only thing left to do in this model is to work on the body. And up in here, where those posts are, there are a couple of sink marks. Now, I don't know how well you can see this there. 
just right there is one of those sink marks. So what I want to do is I want to cross sand this. And there you can see the post down below. But I want to cross sand this so that we can actually cut down that uh, sink mark there. So I'm using some 320 sandpaper. I'd be using some 400 actually. Might be a little softer to start. So as you can see, I'm going at a 45 degree angle this way. And then I'm going to, ooh, let's just move it like that. Come across at a reverse 45 degree angle. And I will keep doing this until that sink mark actually starts to become flush with the rest of the hood. And we're actually reduced the size of it compared to the one on the other side. So I'll continue to do this and then I'll scrape or I'll feel for the seam lines up along the tops of the fenders. Usually they can go up on the roof pillars and around like that, but sometimes they just go straight across. I will get rid of those. The other thing to get rid of are these two little interior uh, like button things. This is where it would be attached to the parts tree. You can see a little bit of black paint in here from <laughs> me putting the chassis in to test it. So again, down here you want to cross sand and get rid of those and flatten them right out because your chassis will actually be uh, held up at those two little points. And we want to get rid of those two little points in there, if you can see them, and get this or these body sides nice and flat and flush. So why don't you do that with me as uh, just off camera and uh, we will come back. The other thing I think I'm going to do is sand this all down, primer it, and then paint it. And I'm going to do that off camera because I really don't want to be a channel where you're sitting there watching somebody paint for like 45 minutes of the video. So when we come back, this will be all completely painted and ready for bare metal foil. So here we have our 1964 Mercury and I painted this using a trim clad light gray. And I know it doesn't look much like uh, any difference from the gray it was molded in before. Actually, it was white plastic. But there are some issues. See, what I wanted to do was bare metal foil this and have it all ready and be like, surprise, here you go. But I painted this with one coat of paint and the trim clad I had was at the bottom of the spray can. Like, so the spray can was almost out of paint. And I thought, well, maybe I can stretch this out and paint it. Well, that's when the problem started. So in along here somewhere, there's like specks of dust. It's not really dust, it's stuff that got siphoned up in that can from the bottom. And then there's like orange peel going down the side. And then in some of these spots here, I'm not sure which side, so I'm just kind of glossing over a bit. It pooled a little bit, a little bit of a drip, a sag. But instead of it sagging, it put all these little pinholes in along the sides here. The roof is a real bad example of it. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but yeah, it's it's all up in there right around this window frame. And then there's big specks of whatever was in the bottom of the spray can. I assume maybe some dry paint from the straw and that's all in here on the hood and the trunk lid. So I've got this really old product I bought a long time ago back in the 90s. And uh, this is the LGM Enterprises Professional Polishing Kit featuring micro mesh cushioned abrasives for perfect high gloss finishes on plastic and so on. Uh, $26.99. I don't think you'll ever be able to buy that for that price anymore, if they exist anymore. But inside you get this nice rubber block. I had another one of these. I don't know what happened to it. The only thing I have left is the smaller block, the second kit. Anyway, uh, my polish long time ago dried up and died. <laughs> I use automotive wax. Anyway, you get those two, but this is the key ingredient. So you get all these sandpapers. The first one is 1800 grit and even the lettering's worn off. So I just got to remember by the basic colors what this was. 18, 24, 32, uh, 36, 4000, 6000, 8000, and 12,000 grade. You use these with uh, water. They are cloth backing. 
So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use these. I'll do this off camera, but I'm going to use the polishing cloths on this and I'll see if I can get the issues out of the paint. And if not, well, sadly, I got to paint this a different color. But I wanted you guys to see that, you know, us YouTubers, professional model builders, building since like I was eight years old, we still run into complications from time to time. And I do hope that the LGM polishing cloth system is going to actually correct this. Otherwise, I'm going to be repainting it a different color. I might try an Arctic blue, but I really wanted this gray color to go against that black and everything. So hopefully the Arctic blue will help if all fails. I started the cut polishing process and sadly I discovered that I actually cut through right here on the gray paint. And the little holes from where the paint sagged are so deep in here that I don't think I'll be able to get them out. This model has actually got two coats of gray on it, but even then I'm still cutting right through. So sadly, I got to strip this thing and I'm going to use Easy Off Oven Cleaner and I hope I have enough and I really don't want to be doing this, but here we go. So here we have our car body after three coats of Trim Clad Pistachio. Now this is sort of like a green gray kind of color and it almost looks like one of the uh, paint colors on the box itself. Now <laughs> I painted three coats on here and I should have stopped at the second coat because I've actually got little dust particles all in the sides here that got painted on and I'm not too sure how that happened exactly. Uh, I've been letting this sit for about four days. And I'm going to try that LGM polishing cloth on here. Hopefully with the three coats on, it's not going to cut through to the white plastic. Because I really don't want to strip this model and paint it again a third time. But uh, overall, let's just try to do a little bit of that polishing. Now here's our model, and I use the LGM polishing cloths just on the roof as a starter to see how this would work and if it would cut through and all the rest. And the three coats of enamel actually really saved it. But now if I turn this maybe this way, I don't know how well you can see this, but if you look at the reflection on the trunk lid, you can see that it's a little bit distorted. There is some orange peel going on in here as well as the dust. But then as I move this along to the roof, you can now see that this is a nice clean reflection on here. It doesn't look so good with the neon lights, but you can really tell with like the circular lights. And uh, again, I've got to do the hood and down the sides here. Now normally when I do polish these things, I usually just polish the top because I found that that's what most people will see. They won't really look down the sides as much. But in this case, there is a lot of dust and orange peel all over this thing, sadly. But uh, it will look really, really good once we do the LGM polishing cloths on here. And I also used the wax, three coats of wax, and it came up really nice. So again, excellent work from the LGM cloths. And I'll just continue off screen with this, and then I'm going to bare metal foil it as well. And we'll come back and take a look at that. Now before I glue the model together, I thought I would show you all the components so that you can get one last chance to see it before it all becomes one solid unit. So here we got our body, the undercarriage, the interior, and the glass. So let's just take a look at these one by one. So first we've got the body. So what I've done here is I've put on bare metal foil along the edges here. I had a bit of trouble with it because this is the uh, ultra bright chrome and it didn't really want to cut. And then once it did cut, it didn't want to peel off. Uh, I got an older version of the thing, so maybe the glue's stronger. You can see the emblem that I painted on here. I hand pinstriped the back chrome line on. And I also added in the red, white, and blue on the side, just like the real car. Added in the Comet there. There's the British Columbia license plate from 64 that I printed up, put on, added in the white backup lights in the center, and then put the chrome on the edges, which again is the tester's paint. And then I added on that antenna there, and our rear view mirrors, as well as the hood ornament. So the hood ornament just pushed down, and that's all done with pressure, same as the front ends and the back ends. Now this one 
you uh, glue the lights through holes and there's two holes in the body. Maybe we can if I turn it this way. You can see. So I glued those outer holes because the inner nothing touches in there. And then up underneath I added in some charcoal gray. It's actually German Panzer gray from World War II and that was a Model Master acrylic color. And I left it clean here. I also, if you can see this, whoops, there we go. I added in chrome on the inner window, the little no draft window there. And then down here, whoops, <laughs> I left that area body color. So that should look right. Now up along the top here, this is all with the testers silver because again, I was having trouble with that bare metal foil and this stuff is thicker than normal chrome foil. So uh, it would all be crunched and wrinkled up around here and I just did not want that mess. And then again, you can see how nice a pistachio green came out. And that's with the cut polish in there, the wax and those micro uh, fine sandpapers. Again, ended up looking really nice. Now let's take a look at our interior one last, or the undercarriage one last time. So there we have our chassis. And uh, you can see the rear axle that I painted in, as well as the fuel tank and the exhaust pipe going up there. Painted the engine black because that's what I saw on the web. And then the transmission, this is our six cylinder in here with the single exhaust. So again, came up quite nice. Then we have our interior with the dark wood steering wheel and dashboard. Again, really nice how this all came out. Really good for a snap fit kit, actually. You can't beat it. So we'll put that off to the side. Now underneath, I added in more of that charcoal gray, up, or panzer gray up along in the roof in this insert here, so that when it goes up into the body, which we'll just grab, it can easily blend in. So there you are. And uh, yeah, so that's all good. Oh, and one under th other thing I wanted to point out, see how I painted the door handle? I take the paint and I come out here a little bit and out along where the button is and then I just do a line around like a loop. So when that's painted it actually looks like a door handle that a person can grab instead of just a straight silver line. So that's all our components for our 64 Mercury. And what I will do next is put them all together and then we can take a look at the car as a completed unit. Here it is, all nicely finished, our 1964 AMT Mercury Comet Caliente. And this one is really nice, actually. Came out really good for just a simple promotional style, snap together, easy kit for the kids. Does look good. Now I did have some trouble with my bare metal foil because this stuff is really thick and it's hard to cut and I'm having trouble cutting it in a straight line. I did add in the black wash in the grill as well as a British Columbia plate which I printed off on the computer. Again, this turned out really nice. There is a little bit of an issue I had with the chassis going in nice and straight but I think I was able to overcome it and get it pretty much balanced north and south and everything, top to bottom and horizontal and vertical as well. Now there's, I, I added in the silver around the lights and the white in the center. I also added in some bare metal foil scrap on here, which goes on to the trunk lid. And then I painted on the emblem there. And again, there's our red, white, and blue on the side, as well as the comment letters, which were hand painted and the Caliente script right there. Caliente in Spanish means hot in English. So I think I did a pretty hot job on this. Another thing that's kind of interesting is notice the grill is also the same kind of grill in the Lincolns. Now I want to make a final little observation. And I do believe in the new upcoming kit, you're going to get the white wall tire on here. Now in this version of the kit that I have from earlier, from the Model King, these are all solid black walls. 
So I do believe that's a new thing. Also, these mirrors can be replaced with spotlights if you wanted to customize it a little bit. And I do believe the new edition as well is coming with a whole decal sheet, which will allow you to customize. Now that's one thing that the Model King version did not have, so it'll be very interesting to see that. Now at the end of the video we do have the box art for the new model kit as promised, so let's take a look at that now. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to build the 1964 Mercury Comet Caliente by AMT Ertl. And what do you think of that new box art? Isn't that really flashy? I hope that you guys can find that model in your local hobby shop coming up in the near future so that you can also build along your new model with my old one. And I'd really love to see those over on our Facebook page. The link for all of that is in the description down below. So like I was saying, I would really love to put this model kit into the upcoming Monster Hobbies Model Car Museum. And that's going to be a nice museum where I get to showcase my model cars and my dad's and in scenery as well with a lot of figures and a lot of cool things going on. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to help support us, please become a member on our YouTube channel right here or over on our Patreon account, which I'll also leave a link for that in the description down below. So, what does your membership get you? Well, a special exclusive little chat room and a special area where you get to see some things that the other local subscribers here to this channel don't get to see. That's the perks of membership. You also get your name at the end of the video credits, so that again is really, really cool. So all you need to do is look for that membership button either on our homepage or in the video description down below. So I really hope you enjoyed this great video and I wish you a lot of success on your builds coming up. And until next time, everybody, happy model building and we'll see you in the next video.